St. John of Kronstadt, in his homilies, gives us a little bit of insight about this little passage of Scripture. He says, For this cause neither did he preach before John, nor did he work miracles until John was cast into prison, lest in this way the multitude should be divided. Therefore also John did no miracle at all, that by this means also might give over the multitude to Jesus, his miracles his miracles drawing them unto him. Sorry, I couldn't read that last word. It's very interesting to me that Jesus, John didn't do any miracles, although everyone knew he was holy. All he did was baptize people into repentance, right? In fact, most of Christ's disciples, if not all of them, came from John's disciples. Because if we remember, there's a passage in the scripture that says, Are you the Messiah or should we look for somebody else? His disciples had come from John. They had come from the baptism of John to Christ. It's interesting to me to note that this is the beginning of Christ's ministry. And the beginning of his ministry follows directly on the heels of his temptation. He begins to... to he begins miracles, he begins to heal people, he begins to minister to those <coughs> of Israel, and he brings the kingdom of God to the people, and he begins that immediately following his temptation. Immediately following a pretty tough week. A week that was so tough that angels actually came and ministered to him, we're told. <laughs> How many other things in Christ's life have we seen in which timing, his timing was impeccable? Everything. Everything in Christ's life, his timing was impeccable. Right? I mean, and one of the ones that first came to my mind was the fact that Lazarus, his friend, had died. And Jesus stayed where he was, and everybody said, hey, Lazarus is sick, Lazarus is sick, Lazarus is sick, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Christ said, I need another cup of tea. Okay, a little more license, but I need another cup of tea. <laughs> and finally, when he gets there, Lazarus is dead. Why? <clears throat> why? Why did you wait so long? They even ask him, why did you wait so long? <clears throat> what, what took you so long to get here? You could have healed him. But so that the glory of God should, could be shown through the resurrection of Lazarus <clears throat> as a symbol of Christ's own resurrection and as a symbol of our own resurrection out of our sinful states. His timing was impeccable. And so if we look through our lives and we watch and we have eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see, we can see that the timing in our own lives, and I've seen this happen over and over and over again. I used to think that in some situations I was procrastinating. And there's a fine line between laziness, procrastination, and good timing. Sometimes that's hard to find. <laughs> but there's been plenty of times when I've waited just long enough that the answer came to me and I was able to say something to someone or do something that was the exact right thing to do. Christ came and was baptized as a servant. He came in humility. He came to his cousin, who he knew well, I mean, we know the scripture, John jumped in Elizabeth's womb when Mary greeted her, right? They were cousins. He knew them. They knew one another. This was not some foreign thing that some guy shows up out of the blue and nobody knew who he was. John knew exactly who he was. And he said, I'm not even, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie your sandals. And yet, Christ in humility, being God, humbled himself and said, you have to baptize me to fulfill the law, to fulfill the prophets, to fulfill all good things. Because it is time. To the time. The time is perfect. And then it says, those, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in darkness and the shadow of death, light has dawned. St. John explains to us this. By darkness here, 
By darkness here, not meaning that which is sensible, but man's errors and ungodliness. Wherefore he also had a they which sat in the region in shadow of death, to them light is sprung up. He goes on to say later, For in truth, the condition of men was worse before Christ's coming. Since they more than walked in darkness, they sat in darkness. A kind of sign that they did not even hope to be delivered. For as a person not even knowing where to put a step forward, so they sat down. Overcome by darkness, not being able so much as to stand anymore. The words of St. John Crossman. I'm sorry, St. John Chrysostom. <coughs> it's interesting to me here the time. St. John says that the, pe the people were in the worst darkness at the moment of his baptism, at the moment that he began his resurrection, or his baptism. At the moment, at that moment. We're often reminded in our church life that we are those who have been delivered into the light, from darkness into light. First, vision, first thing that came to my mind, the first thought that came to my mind was, we've got a big possible candle back, back there. And on, on, the, on matins, what's the priest do? We start in complete darkness. On, on the matins of Pascha, I'm sorry. The matins of Pascha. What do we start that service? It's in complete darkness. And suddenly a light comes out from the altar, and it comes here, and what does he sing? Somebody tell me what he says. What does he say at that moment? Come receive the light. Come receive the light. Come receive the light. What's the whole thing? Come receive the light that is never overtaken by night. We sang last night at Vespers, the joyous light, Jesus the joyous light. At the end of this liturgy, we will sing, what will we sing? We have seen the true light. Come on, guys, my wife can't give all the answers. she got a teaching. <laughs> what is this thing that is light? As St. John shows us, it's our godliness and our sin. What is the light? The light is our repentance before Christ. And when we repent, when we come to Christ in repentance and ask His forgiveness, we are illumined by His resurrection. When we are baptized into the church and we are chrismated, what are we called? The illuminated. Newly illuminated, right? Illuminated. See, we're newly alone. <clears throat> so even though we're having a tough week, Christ can come to us and He can illumine us when we ask for forgiveness. Why? Because trust me, and this week, I know I've sinned. I've gone to those <coughs> and I think I've offended and I've said, please forgive me. And there's something in our repentance, even in the little please forgive me, even when we can, especially when we come to confession, that illumines us and brings us closer to Christ. And when we repent, here's what happens. Every time we repent, we return back to our, the cleanliness of our baptism. When we're the most clean ever. Okay. And we become united with Christ. And our union with Christ is what our life is all about. The very purpose that we are here on this earth is not to make more money, is not to have children, is not to have grandchildren, it's not to have godchildren, all of which are here of mine. <laughs> it's not to build a big company. It's not to help the homeless. All of these things are good, but our very purpose is to be united to God. And those that are continually in repentance before God and those that we know, we call them saints, who have purified their hearts enough, actually will glow with uncreated life. We, know, we have examples of this. Are we capable of that? Yes. Is it probable? Not for me, I'm afraid. I don't think I'll make it, but I'm going to try the best that I can. So even though you're having a rough week, and I'm going to end it with this, because I'm sure... Am I overtime your day? I'm not? Wow. <laughs>
My hope is, is that we'll see in ourselves Christ has illumined us. We are his children. We are his handiwork. He's created us. And I think very often we forget. We forget that we really are God's children. We really are created in the image of God. We forget. We look at the little ones. And we think, oh, they're so cute. They're little angelic beings. Live with them for a couple hours. <laughs> you have to wonder. But this is what we're to be. We're to be little children. The innocence of the little children before Christ. Simple, simple repentance. Looking to our Father and saying, You are our Father. You are the one who loves us. You care about us. And you created me. And therefore, you have illumined me and I am going to love you for all May God come into our darkness. When we experience that darkness, and we do, let's face it, this isn't a one-time deal. This happens over and over and over again. Our repentance is a continual daily process. It's a continual lifelong process. We make mistakes. Yes, we do. But when we make our mistakes, let's repent. And let's look for the timing of God to come in and show us His blessing and His illumination.